so today we saw the realization of the announcement that was made in July or the fulfillment of the promise that was made in July with the signing of this official um, memorandum of understanding between the three countries. So again, it's agreement between the United States, Canada, and Finland to collaborate on the production of polar icebreakers. And it includes a number of different lines of effort. And so there is a piece on information exchange and technology transfer, recognizing that the three countries have different strengths when it comes to icebreaker production. So there'll be information exchange. There is a piece on collaboration in terms of shared design and um, know-how and um, sort of supply chains and industrial capacity. And there's a piece on workforce development. Uh, you know, all three countries are limited when it comes to the really skilled um, engineers and shipyard workers who build icebreakers. And so there'll be some collaboration on workforce development. And then there's also a piece on encouraging allies and partners to um, purchase icebreakers from this collaboration. It's another example of the willingness on the part of the US government to get creative when it comes to competing with China. China is building ships faster than anyone else in the world. And, um, you know, the Chinese government has put really significant subsidies into its shipyards to enable them to produce ships very, very quickly and cheaply. And so it has essentially taken the bottom out of the market and um, enabled China to really get a corner on the, on the shipbuilding market. And that means that shipyards and the shipbuilding industries in many countries are very weak now because they're struggling on an uneven playing field. This agreement is confined to icebreakers, so it's a niche, but it's a niche in which some experimentation, like we see with this ice pact agreement, may pave the way towards broader innovation across shipbuilding as a whole. So I think it's really interesting. This is kind of like a test bed or a microcosm that could pave the way for broader policy innovation across the shipyard industry. And I think that's how it's really being viewed. So it may have implications for NATO, um, which is seeking to do more joint production, joint acquisition programs. It may have implications in other alliance groupings and in different parts of the defense industrial base. And so I think it's really exciting to see where it goes next.